I was 12 years old when I got my first modem, a 1200 board Hayes compatible, and started getting online. And not the internet online, local BBSs. At around the same time, yuppies were sporting the first brick-sized mobile phones as the first GSM networks started rolling out. Fast forward less than 17 years to 2007, and the iPhone launches, followed less than a year by Android. And almost overnight, we've come to expect the world's information in the palm of our hands. Just six years after the first Android phone launch, it's powering everything from phones to tablets, watches, TVs, and cars. So where do we go next? The most obvious answer is enabling the same handheld, cloud-connected computing platform to the next five billion people. As hardware becomes cheaper and more powerful, more of the world's population will be able to get internet-connected computers. And the smartphone is going to be what makes it possible. To facilitate this, we're seeing new approaches to getting online. Mesh networks, white spaces, or even Google's Project Loon will hopefully soon see ubiquitous worldwide internet connectivity become a reality. At the same time, smartphones will start to disappear. In the same way that we don't think of computers as computers once they become part of our dishwashers, cars, or TVs, we'll stop thinking of mobiles as such when they disappear into our watches and white goods. We'll come to expect that anything that can be improved through the incorporation of a wireless internet connection will simply have one. For that to happen, we need to find more creative ways to interact with computers than using mice, keyboards, and touchscreens. I can already pick up my phone or lift my wrist, address Google, and perform searches, send text or email, set alarms, or take notes without having to touch a screen or keyboard. Screens themselves have become so sharp that their pixel densities aren't perceptible to the human eye. And the team at Google X are building contact lenses capable of measuring blood sugar levels. Speaking of sensors, not only can I control my phone by putting it either face up or face down, it has a battery of sensors similar to an Aegis class warship. Light meters, temperature gauges, barometers, gyroscopes, all of which can be used to replace text entry or automate processes. Wearables, cars, and thermostats introduce even more possibilities for sensors. Connect all of that to the cloud, and the possibilities are endless. The future of Android isn't a more powerful phone operating system. It's as the brains behind invisible, ubiquitous cloud-connected computing. So the skills we learn today to build cool apps are the same skills we'll use tomorrow to control everything around us. We've taken the first step into that future. I can't wait to see what you do next.